What's going on everybody? My name is James. Today we're going to be working on the BMW electric vehicle conversion. Now I'm home for Thanksgiving right now, so this is not going to be a huge bump in progress, but I want to at least get this started so that when I come home from my winter break in about three weeks, I can kind of hit the ground running and have some things taken care of before I come home. So the main thing that I want to try to do tonight and tomorrow is take off the front bumper and maybe the radiator because the first thing I got to do is take the engine out. And uh, there's still very much an engine sitting in there. This car from the factory and in the manual, it talks about removing the engine by dropping it out from below. I don't really have a lift available at this second. I could theoretically maybe get one to use, but the problem is I don't know how long it's going to take and the price of renting a lift or just potentially leaving a car in a friend's shop for a long time, not something I want to deal with. So I'd rather do it in my own time here by myself. And that's just going to require me to take it out through the front of the car. I've seen people lift it completely out of the front, um, like straight up, but this is such a long engine that I think it's easy enough just to pop the front bumper and crash bar out of and just kind of pull the engine out through the front of the vehicle. So I'm going to start seeing how far I can get in disassembly. I'm probably going to need to make a stop at Harbor Freight tomorrow and get some hex bolts or hex uh, bits, I should say, because I'm starting to notice that there are a bunch of hex bolts I'm going to need to remove. So I'm going to get my 10 millimeter and I'm going to get to work. All right, so this is the Northeast. I'm in Connecticut and uh, you can see I'm bundled up as well as I could. Kind of trying to keep my mobility. So I got my hat, got my sweatshirt, should be fine. So I don't really know exactly how this is gonna come apart, but I'm gonna try my best. And so let's see what we can do. decent amount of stuff removed here, uh, mostly the headlights and the trim under that. And most of this top bar that stretches all the way across, kind of that holds the hood down, is loose, but it's held on right in this area there. So I'm starting to work around there to see if I can get you know, this whole chunk out. Um, and that I think will give me access to the bumper trying to figure out exactly how it's affixed. I feel like there's some bolts that's stuck behind this black plastic trim here, but I'm afraid to start pulling that off because I worry if that's removed, there's gonna probably be some clips that hold it on and I'm gonna have to get new clips for that. And I just worry that this stuff won't go back on the way that it is right now. So I was looking at the other side because conveniently, it didn't actually come with the trim over here. So I was looking and I noticed that it looks like it's held onto the crash bar with these little plastic nubs right here. But again, I don't know exactly how I would replace them. They're not bolts, they're completely round. Um, so I don't know exactly what to do about that. I'm hoping that there's a way I can get the entire crash bar structure. You can see the aluminum uh, right there. There's a whole aluminum bar that goes across the width of the bumper. So if I can get that whole assembly to come off, then I won't have to replace those. But uh, I mean, maybe it's just as easy as just taking off these bolts for the uh, the shock absorber a little bit there. I don't know. It seems like it's held on somewhere lower though, kind of below. You can see there's like a structure down there in that uh, where that triangular piece is. So I'm gonna keep poking around and seeing if I can find anything. But man, you can see this car. <laughs> It's, it's a bit of a mess. I mean, I didn't have to do too much to get a lot of this stuff off because so many bolts are already missing or loose or stuff like that. It's just, <laughs> for 500 bucks, this car is in pretty rough shape. I also noticed that the uh, there is a temperature sensor that used to go down there. You can see the wires, if it'll focus down there, I doubt it. 
there's some wires dangling right there where there used to be a temperature sensor in the wheel well that got torn out. All of the ABS sensors except for one are cut or ripped or something like that. Don't know how that happened, but it did. So <laughs> it's been through kind of hell and back. And even down here on the side of the fender here, you can see that they probably got a flat tire and kept driving with it because it uh, did a pretty decent number on the paint. Uh, I went through and I waxed and I buffed it and a lot of the brown or the black came out, but this area right here around the whole fender used to just be completely black. So it cleaned up kind of nice. I'm not too worried about it. It doesn't, I mean, yeah, it's scratched up, but it doesn't look terrible. Thankfully, I mean, it's cosmetic. It's not, you know, a functional problem. So, but uh, yeah, I'm going to see if I can hopefully start to get this chunk out. I know that the radiator is under there. I'm going to have to drain that at some point, but <laughs> it's got a radiator leak anyway, so it's probably already halfway drained by this point. So the bumper is officially off, as you can see. We got a pretty clean fascia there. And uh, yeah, actually it didn't turn out to be anything regarding these little clips up there. It just happened to be those few bolts that I thought, uh, they're right here. And uh, took off three nuts, nuts and washers up here. And uh, it was actually pretty simple. There were, let's see if I can get a good view of them here. There are these shock absorbers, which I believe are mandated to kind of help cushion the impact. And those just kind of slid into the frame rails right there. So once these three bolts are out on each side, the whole thing just kind of peeled off. And there were a few clips that had to be done, uh, you know, undone on the sides there, right there, and right about there. But once I got those sorted out, the thing just slid right off. It just took me a while to get this side just because these bolts right here get very close to the aluminum frame rail that runs right in front of them, kind of the crash bar. So trying to get a ratchet in between there while being able to have enough leverage definitely took a little bit of time. But once I got that, again, it kind of came right off and I'm just gonna put these bolts back on so I remember where they came from and see if I can get, again, a little more done with this radiator area here. Because once this comes off and the radiator is out, it should be actually very easy sailing for pulling this engine out forward. So good progress and uh, let's see what happens next. Okay, so funny enough, I actually realized this right as I started uh, or ended the last video that this whole section right here is now completely loose. The only thing that seems to be holding it on are these little screws right here, which uh, can I, I can undo this one. I think. Should really get this thing right off here with minimal effort. Is that too big? 13? Yeah. There we go. Oh, I can see it drooping. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to get rid of that hood latch uh, cable there, that hood latch release cable. I can see it hanging right there. I don't want to rip that because I'd like to be able to uh, continue to open my hood from inside. Uh, I can see there's some wiring I'm going to have to get rid of, but I can see that this whole assembly is 99% free right now. There's just some of these cable clips I'm going to have to undo and make sure that, uh, you know, I work with that hood latch to ensure that I'm not ruining it. And this should be pretty good. So let's let's see what happens.
So I should have double checked exactly what I was doing. I started to take out the hood latch release right here. Uh, you can see where it's supposed to be right here uh, because it was connected by this cable to the car and it wouldn't come off. So I did undid the bolts and I started to take this whole like front plastic piece off so I could get to it. Then I realized this one was also connected to it. And then I thought, there's gotta be an easier way. There's no way this is how the factory does it. Turns out there's this little connector box and it sits right there. You see this end right there it has a little nub on it. That nub goes into this little thing there and that connects the hood latch release to the bumper. And I just had to undo that instead of spending probably about 20 minutes getting that far. Now I gotta put that all back together. And uh, yeah, but look at this. Look at how far we've gotten. This is pretty much a wholly exposed engine. Once the radiator is drained and off, the engine is just slid forward. And this has only been like an hour and a half of work maybe, not too bad. Just a, you know, this actually might be a little bit harder if uh, you had a, a little bit of a better shaped BMW because uh, I have a feeling that I probably skipped out on a few bolts that uh, were never put back. So that's probably why it's been so easy. But uh, yeah, we're making good progress. So uh, let's see if we can finish this up. Uh, all right, so we've made some progress to say the least, and uh, yeah, you can mount to the radiator over here. We have everything else out of the way, as you can see, a little bit more space to move. I'm gonna put these parts downstairs in the basement so they're not in the way. Kind of clean up this area, and uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna call it quits just yet. I want to see if I can get any further, but. Uh, Definitely a crazy good start for the first day of actual mechanical work. Honestly, this is about as wrapped up as I expected to be today, and I got this done a lot faster than I'd originally thought. So I put pretty much everything back in terms of like bolts and things so I don't forget where they go. Um, I've got all the bolts there, everything's kind of loosely fitted back where it came from. Uh, so that way I can uh, put the front half back on when this is all set. Now, uh, there's a few things that's gonna be interesting with this chunk right here because uh, obviously I'm gonna have to drain the radiator. That's not a big deal. Now, I don't want to be like an environmental hazard, so I want to get rid of that air conditioning, coolant, or refrigerant in a reasonable way. I know that I can just kind of take that cap off and let it all come out, but I know that that is not recommended by a lot of people. So. I gotta find a way to discharge that system before taking this stuff off because that'll make kind of a big mess if I don't. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't seem like it's actually gonna be too bad. Uh, and I can kind of see, <laughs> I mentioned that there was a leaky radi radiator. You can kind of see uh, where that happened here. I know that that's a very common thing for these cars with their expansion tanks right there. So I'm not too surprised that that happened. And, uh, you know, I know that I have that new radiator in that box, but I'll probably just sell that because, uh, you know, I'm not gonna need it. There are so many questions I have about this car. Like, why is there so much dirt under here? Like, did it drive? Did it go off-roading? I really don't know. Everything here is just so loose. There's no bolts in this thing, so the air box is just loose. The mass airflow sensor, I think, is completely shot. Everything is just a complete <laughs> mess in this car, but, I think it's gonna be uh, giving some new life with this new engine coming up. And speaking of that, uh, let's see. So it's down here, can I turn on? Uh, it doesn't seem like I turn on a light back here, but it is, uh, it's pretty big. I mean, I got a size 12 foot, if that. <laughs> it's, it's quite hard to see, I know, but uh, it is a pretty hefty motor, I will say. I know that it is DC, and I know that that's not recommended and not really as popular as AC motors now because of efficiency and everything like that. But it's what I got. I got a great deal on it and it's, I don't know, 170 ish horsepower, about 144 kilowatts. So probably more than this car came with originally. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to put that in. 
so there's an advantage to having this inline six over say like if this is a V6. The fact that this is an inline six means that it's very long in kind of the length of the car. So it goes very deep into the car that way. If this was a V6, it would probably be cut off right about there and you would be left with uh, a lot less space to have things up front here. But the fact that this engine goes so deep into kind of where the cabin is means that the electric motor will not take up a lot of space here. The electric motor isn't that long, so it'll probably end up coming out, you know, only this far in the engine bay. So there's so much more space. I can't really <laughs> demonstrate very well, but uh, you know, you'll have a lot more space up front to the sides to have maybe, you know, a few batteries and the controller up top. There'll be just much more room for activities, I'll say. So I think that this is the perfect combination for what I'm looking to do, and I'm glad that we made some good progress today. So again, next time, radiator and everything like that is going to come out. And when I get back for Christmas break, we'll finally get the engine crane, hook it up to there, loosen some bolts, and hopefully get this thing torn out so we can move on to converting this thing. So <laughs> if there's anything I've learned today, it's that... Uh, I need to invest in some kind of a heater and maybe some better organizational tools. I'm going to have to get some paper bags for some bolts and things so I can keep track of everything and some markers. And uh, one thing I do want to plug before I leave is I do have a Patreon link down below. I am trying to make these videos more regularly and with as much content as possible. So if you choose to do this yourself, you'll have a good backlog and basically a complete written and video guide on how to do this. And if you guys are able to donate even one or two dollars to that Patreon account, it'll help out a lot in getting me some, uh, maybe some newer tools. I actually had a uh, ratchet go bad on me, my small ratchet. You saw me fighting with that bolt down there. Ended up actually breaking the ratcheting mechanism in one of my ratchets. So I have to look at that replaced. Uh, I have to get a heater, all that kind of stuff because I want to get this done and I want to get it done for you guys as well. And, you know, that little bit of extra will help because... I'm kind of taking a risk by not having a job over my break just so I can get this done because I don't want this to last, uh, you know, three or four years. I would like to get this done in a reasonable time frame. So I'm kind of taking some risks and if you guys could help out, I would really appreciate it. I'll link that down below along with my website, electricbeamer.com. It's kind of self-explanatory as to why it's called that. That's kind of more for the small things that's not really worth a full video. So there's a lot of like talk about the controller and even some little short stories about the interesting things that's happened along the way with this car. So check that out if you want a little bit more content and information regarding this car. And that's really going to be it for me today. I'm going to go through, edit this, hopefully have it up by tonight. And we'll start fresh tomorrow and see if we can get some more headway done. I think we're on a pretty good path. I think we actually have a good shot of getting this done by the end of my break in mid-January. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.